You're watching Car Tower TV. And I'm Jenny. So you want a small SUV for the city? I don't know if there's anything smaller than this one. Well, I'm sure you know, so feel free to correct me in the comments section. But just be sure not to comment about Jimny. Ah yes, Jimny, our beloved off-road legend. This one is a whole different kind, so the Jimny is not really a competitor. The car I'm talking about is the latest Suzuki Ignis. The one I have here is the higher GLX trim. It is a small city SUV that boasts an unusual design, more practicality than the dimensions suggest, and good value for money, and mostly misses out on things you would not expect in a tiny, affordable city SUV. So don't get any unrealistic expectations. But is it just too small? It's the perfect dimensions for city driving. Hell, its turning circle is just 4.7 metres. The whole body is 3.7 metres long, so it should fit into any parking space. Moreover, it's boxy and elevated, so it's easy to manoeuvre and guess where its angles are. In short, Suzuki really nailed the compact part. It's about as compact as they get. We'll see if the boxy part helps enough with the interior space in a minute. In terms of styling, the Ignis didn't jump on the current bandwagon. It's actually more of a retro feel. Some of the themes include this wonderfully quirky front, which kept some playfulness that cars like this one should have. I also love the side silhouette. It's boxy and rugged. Lastly, the rearmost window is surprisingly large, both for a car of this class and for these dimensions. Bonus points for that. All in all, being so unique should mean that Ignis will be one of those cars that people either love or hate to look at. Personally, I lean towards the love. However, in terms of engines, in Australia, we only get one. It is a 1.2 litre naturally aspirated petrol engine with 66 kilowatts of power and 120 newton meters of torque. It's paired with either a five-speed manual in the lower trim or a CVT automatic in this one. Now this engine is no powerhouse, but I discovered that it is good enough in town. I mean, you won't win any traffic light sprints, but you will get up to speed relatively quick. The CVT does a great job of utilising the limited power of the engine. It gets to comfortable revs quickly, and that means it rarely struggles in everyday conditions. Speaking of comfortable revs, they can be pretty high up. 120 newton meters is not much, but it's enough. The good side of this powertrain combo is the fuel efficiency. In non-spirited, mostly city driving, we easily got under 6 litres per 100 kilometres on a regular basis. This engine has been around for a while, so if you do have one, let us know how you have found fuel efficiency in the comments. There is some body roll, and handling is anything but sporty. Obviously, if speed and handling is more your jam, then just stick to a little hatch, like the Swift. Now, if you just need to potter about the city, in terms of driving features, the Ignis is a sweet choice. The interior also has a bit of that retro Suzuki feel, which inevitably means that it is a lot different from pretty much anything we see on the road nowadays. But the main thing that helps fit the Ignis into a particular price bracket is not the styling, it's actually the materials. There are are a lot of plastics on the inside and not of the highest quality, but they are hardy and practical. Another positive is that the design makes the interior really spacious, despite the really tiny exterior proportions. Layout is also really good, with fine button grouping and clear borders. Once you're familiar with where everything is, you won't need to look at the buttons to use them. And that's a great advantage for city driving. It's got the same infotainment screen we've seen in Suzuki's for a while now. The screen itself is seven inches wide and comes with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, as well as sat-nav and a reversing camera, all of which is standard even on the entry-level version. Nice. Also, I do want to mention that the reversing camera is impressively sharp. In terms of storage, the front's pretty good with a decently sized glove box, bottle holders in the doors, cup holders in front of the gearbox lever, and a sizable tray for your phone very close to the charging points. Now, before we move to the back, I'd have to say that the main appeal of this interior is good visibility. Large windows, small pillars, except for that huge C pillar, and predictable exterior dimensions, coupled with a raised driving position. Even absolute beginners will get a confidence boost when it comes to parking the Ignis. Now, space in the back. It's actually a four seat vehicle, and the two in the back will have plenty of space. The boxy body and the elevated stance adds loads of headroom and legroom. Lastly, having two seats in the back means that you don't cram three people. The space for two is remarkable. For three, it's impossible. So are you wondering how it compares to its competitors? Well, what are its competitors exactly? For example, the Kia Stonic is 40 centimetres longer. Even the Hyundai Venue is more than 30 centimetres longer. That's a whole size up. 
In fact, it's much closer to non-SUV subcompact city cars. Compared to those, the backspace in the Ignis is incredible. It's literally on a different level. Now, rear seat amenities are limited. There's no armrest, no air vents, and there's only one cup holder, but there are bottle holders in the doors. There's 270 litres of luggage space with the seats up, over 500 with the seats folded down, and the max volume of 1,100 litres. Again, if we compare this to subcompact city cars, it's more than good. There is a load lip, and the fact that when you fold the seats, they make a really large step in the boot. But honestly, for a car this size with this much interior space, complaining would be a little unfair. In terms of safety, the Ignis gets ABS, EBD, electronic stability control, traction control, hill hold control, brake assist, reversing camera, keyless entry and start, cruise control with speed limiter and similar. It does miss out on the latest safety perks, but that's fairly expected at this price. Pricing for the Ignis starts at just under 21,000 for a manual GL and just under 23,000 for this auto GLX. That's drive away pricing, so that's impressive. Now there are many kinds of buyers who could opt for the Ignis. Basically anyone who needs a compact, affordable, practical city car, they have a great choice here. More specifically, when I think of the Ignis, there are two kinds of drivers that mainly came to mind. The first kind is a person who wants to run city errands while having a reliable and practical car, still be able to fit kids in the back, and as a bonus, have more space than most tiny city cars have. The second kind is novice drivers, younger ones who will buy a car for a reasonable price, get the main features in it, enjoy the quirky look and raised driving position, and whose parents won't have to worry they'll drive like a maniac. That engine just won't let them do it. Also, the Ignis is probably the only car on the market that combines affordability, increased ground clearance, extra interior space, and all in such a small package. Now, if you want all that with a bit of uniqueness, the Ignis is a great option. And even number one in some people's opinion. Thanks again for watching Cartel TV. Now, if you're interested in a Suzuki, you should check out their car figure to set up the game. On their website, you can build your own awesome Suzuki car and it's almost like a, I don't know, a street fighter or something. So check it out and we'll see you in the next review. Peace.